Structured exception handling within the .NET framework relies on exception classes that pertain to the different aspects of the application you're working with. Ultimately, all of our exceptions that we handle within the .NET framework derive from the system.exception class. And the system.exception class has the basic member variables and methods that we will use to work with all of our exceptions in our code. As an example, in the object browser, I have system.exception open, and we can see that it represents errors that occur during application execution. We have very specific properties such as data, which will get a collection of key value pairs providing additional user-defined information. So if you're throwing your own exception, you can populate that information. There's a potential to use a help link where there may be a help file in your application associated with that type of exception that took place. Another common one that you would use is the inner exception, which gets an instance of the system.exception that caused the current one. So the return value will be an instance of exception describing the error that caused your current exception. Message is that textual message that we saw in our divide by zero exceptions earlier in the course. So it's the error message that describes the reason for the exception itself. And it potentially could be an empty string if you're creating your own exception classes. The source tells us where the exception came from, so which application or object caused the error of the exception itself. And then we have constructors, and these are overloaded constructors. So if you want to create a new exception of your own, we have exception, we have exception string, which will accept a string message. And then we have another overloaded one, which will accept a string message. And then the system.exception is an inner exception. So again, all of these exception classes within the .NET framework structured exception handling routine flows from system.exception. There are various ones that are available. You can search on MSDN to find out some of the exception classes that exist for different errors that may occur in your application. There are some that we can think of specifically. So we had the divide by zero exception. We can just type in a portion of that in our object browser and click on search and it will go through and find our divide by zero exception class for us. The exception that was thrown, there was an attempt to divide by an integral or decimal value by zero. So we saw that divide by zero. There is some of the other exceptions. There are IO exceptions that exist within the .NET framework. So we can search for IO and this deals with input output. So an exception that is thrown when an input output error occurs. Again, one of the things that I recommend is that if you're unsure of some of the system exceptions that may occur, use the general exception handler routine, so just catch exception E, and then as you're testing your application, any of the exceptions that occur will come back and will write out to the console window or to some error message that will be displayed to you what those specific exceptions were that occurred in the application. Then you can go back and rewrite your code to start catching the very specific exceptions in the application itself. So again, you know, a good understanding of where the system exceptions come from is a good idea, knowing they ultimately generate from system.exception is great. Uh, you don't need to know all of the potential exceptions because it's huge. If you were to just go into the object browser and type in exception and click on search, the amount of results that get returned are large. And a lot of the namespaces have exceptions that pertain to those specific classes that are within the namespaces as well. So use the object browser. Use the general exception to catch more specific ones at first till you understand what they are. Or search on MSDN for some of the exceptions available in C-sharp. And this will give you an idea of how to use them within your own C-sharp projects.